Welcome to Bitch Talk, booze interviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. I'm Erin. That's Ange. Hi. That's Char. Hello. You can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com where you can sign up for our monthly e-news. For behind the scenes videos and two minute clips of our interviews, head to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You can find us every other Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. at bff.fm. And if you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For the love of God, do it. It really helps. Hey, Bitch Talkers. We are basic bitching once again because so much happens in a week in our lives. Or maybe it doesn't happen. I don't know. That's what Char says, but I'm pretty sure she has a story or two up her sleeve. Uh, We're Zooming as usual because that's our favorite way to basic. And uh, I I think I'll start us off. We have a new fan of the show who's a somewhat regular at my bar. Which makes it interesting. <laughs> oh wow, that is. So I'm going to shout out to Anon who had some serious questions for me and 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 for you, Ange. Oh, um, really? He wanted to know what happened with your DNA. He's like, she left us hanging. We don't really <laughs> know what's going on. Um, and we had a really actually good conversation about. Um, I'm not kidding. He's he's listening. <laughs> So I'm like, what are you listening to exactly? I'm scared. Um, he, we had a good conversation about um, the stuff we were talking about in, in terms of studio gatekeepers. And he wanted me to be specific. And I'm like, well, I'll name off the three films you weren't asked to be on. Uh, somehow got skipped over or whatever. Um, so it was good. And he's like, oh, yeah, that he's like, I've felt that, too. And it's happened to me in my career where you're like, what happened? Mm-hmm. <laughs> why, why wasn't I included? Um, but it's good. So what's up, Anon? Thanks for listening. Let's keep talking about our shows. Yeah, (laughs) thank you. Thank you so much for caring about my uterus. Yes. Um, (laughs) Well, the the funny thing is we're waiting for my insurance to approve the tests. So they took the samples and they told me, they warned me that it would take a couple of weeks for the insurance to approve it. Of course. Um, But because, you know, I have this genetic thing and my sister is already recovering from cancer. Of course, they were going to approve it. It just takes time. So I just got the letter in the mail that they approved it a few oh, days ago. So okay. I'm assuming I'll get the results back. They said once they approve it, we, we get the results right away. So I'm hoping in the next week or so. Fingers crossed, hoping for a hysterectomy. <laughs> title of my autobiography. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I want to have the genetic uh, predisposition, but I do just, you know. Right. Want to get rid of useless hardware. <laughs> useless is that, hardware. <laughs> is that the, is that the, t- did you just say that that's the title of your biography? Hoping for a hysterectomy. I have a few different titles, but that one's pretty good. I feel I like think. diapers should also be a part of your <laughs> That's a, a chapter. title. It's a chapter. Just diapers. Mm-hmm. That's the chapter. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Let's, I want to, we got to do a lot of things with your story. Got to write the book. Then we got to do the episodic. I mean, there's a lot mm-hmm. going on. Yeah. Well, we have some friends though, uh, that are making big moves episodically. So, you know, they can give us some advice. Shout out to Frankie Quinones. Yes. Um, his new Hulu show called This Fool. Hopefully we'll have him on soon. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, watch it in the meantime and super proud of you, Frankie. Yeah. I, uh, I texted text to the ladies of bitch talk yesterday and i'm like this show is really good and it is i watched the first episode and you know you never know what the first episode um there are laughs laughs out loud um it's just it's a good show and it's very la so i know Ange is gonna love it she's gonna feel right at home um i do have to say uh perm talk also was a real highlight was a big hit <laughs> i mean the People are here for perms. Uh, I know Ange isn't on social media that much, but I'm sure Shar saw it. So I posted perms on Friday. So I'm like, I'm just going to do this and see what happens. And of course, perm talk. And I so I used hashtag show us your perm. Uh, people sent in their perms. So I've been <laughs> I've been putting them in stories. People that I don't know, people that I do know, uh, listeners, people that follow us. Uh, and there's some naturally curly hair 
people, curly haired people that sent in photos and I put them up anyways. I'm like, I don't care. These are great people that, you know, and uh, Rachel. Uh, oh so my Jake, God. Her, her, yes. I should just show, I'll just send you the photos. Her very big um, hair when she was like a kid, it's just naturally curly, but also just big. And then our, our friend, Steven oh. had some, some good hair. Uh, and our friends, Sino and Lindsay, I don't know if I've ever showed you this. They looked exactly alike as children. Exactly alike. I have seen it. Seen yeah. those, right? Yeah. And they both had triangle hair, which mm-hmm. was permed. <laughs> so I posted those. <laughs> and then another friend of mine who I used to work with, um, Lindsay, sent me. <laughs> she sent it yesterday. She's like, I'm late to the perm talk. But if you want to post it, go ahead. She only got her bangs permed on top. <laughs> so it was a mullet, a poodle, a poodle mullet. <gasps> That's isn't, special. Isn't that what we used to do in the seventh grade? Or we just curled the top of our Well, heads? I mean, I just did this. <laughs> I did have a wave. Yeah, like a chola wave. With but this is net. like, yeah, I'll show you the photo while we're talking. But it yeah. wasn't curled. But Char, <laughs> you were. First of all, we had a group thread for Bitch Talk. <laughs> And Aaron was asking us for perm photos. Which yes. Is, sorry, I'm running late. But it's I do okay. Somewhere. <gasps> Char, within like two minutes, Char had like 30 pictures <laughs> of her perms through the years. And it was incredible. You were so adorable as a little kid. But the high school picture at Great Dude, is in front the of the best. edge. Now I can't I can't look at you without imagining that perm on you. It's oh, so yeah. special. The it spi- is the spiral perm, man. The spiral, spiral perm. perm. Your the hair spiral. was so long. In nineteen, that was nineteen ninety four. Oh my god! I but I couldn't find Why the one. You have all those pictures. Well, no, you know what? Like- it's what's, the way that that happened is I have on my phone. I have uh, like when I find pictures of like that, like where I see these pictures, <laughs> I screenshot them or I take a picture. Like if I'm at my grandma's or like when we were cleaning out my grandma's house or whatever, I take snapshots of and so and smart. i and i throw it in a folder and it's like all it's it'll say throwback and so i have to find that folder and go through it and then i'll find all these pictures and i'm like <laughs> ah, 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 ah. no I, I i ignored my phone for like an hour and i look and right there and asked the question and there were like 20 photos from char <laughs> just like damn but, you were ready but, but the one but the one the but unfortunately the one that i was actually looking for the one that uh, that's you and the, your dad, the one where it's me and my the dad matching. sitting next to each other with the, <laughs> <laughs> with the, with the matching perms. I, I can't wait. <laughs> it's, I, it's not there. And so that actually would require me like going into a closet, into a box of, oh, yeah. of a photo album or something like that. That wasn't readily handleable, ha- readily available on my phone. And I was like texting like my cousin or my cousin. You know, I was like, <laughs> I was, like, dude. Do you have any pictures of me when I had that perm when I was little? <laughs> no, 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 we've no, never, no dice. we've never gotten more engagement <laughs> on Instagram. So I'm like, okay, I guess we have to keep doing throwback shit, which is fine. It shows our age. It. Well, and people were are only just... thirty. <laughs> the perm was was thirty yeah. years ago. Yeah, Not, with yeah. My, we're only thirty. My spiral that, that spiral haircut I had at Green America was when I was five. <laughs> yes. Well, I have but, to show you here. I don't know if you can see. Look at that hair on top. It's this. That's it's my. Perm. Is that my friend? No. Oh. Oh. Also, my friend's it. name is Lisa, not Lindsay, but same last oh. name. Oops. But. uh I should cover that, but it's okay, only on top. Wow. <laughs> and her face is crazy. She's adorable though. She, she's rocking it. Yeah. But anyway, well, people are just nostalgic right now. I feel like. Yeah. Any and it's sort of comfort food. Yeah. And it's the thing of, yeah, it, this is just a no brainer. It's hilarious. I also, I think I'm going to do a call out, but I didn't, well, you know what? My graduation photo looks like glamour shots. I'm going to do a call out for glamour shots. Oh, nice. Because we got one glamour shot perm. <laughs> oh, wow. From, a, from someone who just follows us. I love it. This is exciting. Thank you, everyone. Oh, yeah, I thank mean, you. Weren't, weren't our high school senior pictures kind of glamour shots? That's what I'm saying. Mine, oh, yeah. I have a fake rose. I mean, let's just be honest. It's terrible. I'm like still pretty 
chola in mine. My lipstick is like, really <laughs> it's really dark. Or we should just do graduation photos. Ooh. Senior photos. Senior photos. Yeah. Okay. Let's do senior photos because they're going to look like glamour shots from the <laughs> 90s. And then, of course, I went down a rabbit hole of like, are there still glamour shots? And I think the New York Times or someone in 2019 did a whole article about there's like four existing glamour shots in the country. That was a good time, though, when you can go to Sears or somewhere in the mall with your friends and everyone throws in like five bucks and then you can just take pictures. Together. Yeah. And it was like it was sort of like now how you make things. My Facebook official is even old, but you make things official on social media. That back in the day is how you made your your friend core official. It's like when you went to the mall and you took pictures together, it's like sealed. Or at school dances. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those were. Those I have some really of those, fun. too. And oh, who's yeah. The, who's the only Asian in the photo? <laughs> <laughs> or she's <laughs> like, who are these white girls? I'm like, look. Or, or speaking of the hair pump, I yeah, like where there's like, you know, 20 girls in the picture and they yes. all have the same hair. The big hair. Uh, yeah. And you would have some sort of matching theme. Like ours was like striped shirts and jean shirts. Over yes. It. Yep. <laughs> We wore boxers. Oh, wow. Boxers. I mean, I have it. I have boxers. Okay. That was yeah. a thing, though, to wear. It was a thing. Boxers. We all got. And men. you'd roll them. Would you roll yes. them? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, I should, yeah. Okay. I'll share my my uh, my group prom prom photo where there's like all of us. In the, uh, there's like 10 of us in that picture. And then we did one where it's like everybody was like, be serious. And so we're all not smiling. We're like. <laughs> <laughs> we can oh man this can be a, like every month or every week a trend because we can do prom photos oh yeah glamour Day shot with friends glamour yeah yeah i'm gonna do it i'm, go I'm gonna start with senior photos can mm -hmm. you guys send me those oh i can find that one a lot easier yeah okay okay i have to have my mom take the my mom literally still has it up in a frame <laughs> at her oh house. you've seen you've seen the pictures up at my my have i house. your senior picture maybe but anyway all right let's do it i also want to say i just did a poll on instagram and i'm like what should we do for our seventh 700th episode and i wrote take a nap crash the emmys again which i'm like that was almost a year ago y'all <laughs> wow next month that's a year ago i know Anyways, and then uh, the other one was get perms. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that won, of course. <laughs> uh, it's and just now for it's just for shits and giggles. It's I mean, we could do so. some sort of matchy matchy hair thing. You no. already copied my hair for 10 yeah. years. That's true. I might do it again, too. I kind of just want to shave all of my hair off. I'm over it. No, we can get we can get perms and then, you know, the carpet will match the drapes. No. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> I've been talking a lot. And she said you had a funny story. I thought you were going to talk about you just went to a Giants game. Oh, right. That was last night. I'm a little hungover. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shout out to my friend, Matt Peterson at the Giants. I don't even know his title. I know it's fancy. I've known this guy since I worked at the Ritz a million years ago. We can't remember how he got connected, um, but I hadn't talked to him. I, ha I haven't. I think the last time I saw that I texted with him was early March of 2020 because he has the, his birthdays around my birthday. That's the last time over the weekend. Our our mutual friend, my old work husband, Harold, texted me a picture of him and Matt hanging out at the game. And I'm like, holy shit, is that Matt Peterson? And anyway, it turned into like he's like, I'll be at the game on Tuesday if you want to come. And I'm like, are you offering tickets? And he offered tickets and he gave us very nice tickets in the cloud club, which I didn't know anything about. I thought it was club level, first of all, which I was fine with. I'm like, I like club level. It's rad. Jeff's like, no, these are not club level. This is cloud club. And I'm like, I don't know. So we get there. It's in the suite. It's in the suites area. And as soon as we get in and we're like, <laughs> there's a guy that's at the door and we're like, we're first timers, obviously. So he's like, oh, cool. I'll tell you everything you need to know. He gives us like a bracelet to get in. And he's like, so once you go through the door um, every month, I think there's a different theme. And this year or this month was Chinatown. 
And so the food's uh, Chinese food, blah, 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 blah. And when you go in, you just get to eat and drink everything. What? <gasps> wow. Oh, my God. Yeah, and you too. This is your dream. Oh, I will bring a large purse. And especially at that stadium where it's like $20 for a small Budweiser. Like, right. that's a big deal. Yeah. So we were living our best lives last night. And I told Matt, I was like, I, this is like the best thing ever. <laughs> this is the best. You made our week. You made our month really sweet. He's like, well, uh, he's like, just let me know. You know, there are nights that are super slow and, and get you in. I'm like, okay. Okay. Let me know. I'll come just for that. Well, I was thinking, I think they're in town on the 12th. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm like, I think I'm going to ask. And we can make it part of our 700th. Cool. You deserve okay. it. You deserve a, a nice Tuesday? little treat. You too deserve it. What? <laughs> Is that a Tuesday? No, it's a Monday. Oh, okay. I was gonna Why? Say, well, no, because we were just talking about how the Giants seem to win on the, in those city oh. connectors Dude, on Tuesdays. Also, the game was awesome, and they won in the bottom of the ninth. Uh, I'm going to say it's because I started doing the chant of, uh, what was it, Brandon Crawford? I didn't say let's go Brandon, of course. Because <laughs> I think I was just yelling Brandon Crawford, Brandon Crawford, and he fucking hit that home run. So I'm just gonna say I that was all me. Did Gabe nothing, give you? Had, did had nothing to do with Brandon Crawford at all? Gabe, of course not. Did he give you a little wink or what? Guess what tonight is. And I didn't know Gabe Kapler bobblehead. Yes. I just pulled that out of my ass. I swear to God. Really? I was, yes. I was like, ah, but it's what's special... he wearing? Oh, uh, you'll have to look. He has they put some nice high top Nikes on him. Of course. Oh, I know. I'm like the Shut things, up. the things that would be done to that. Bobblehead. Yeah, that spring will be <laughs> sprung. <laughs> the spring has oh. sprung. <laughs> I got crazy glue. We're good. Gross. Okay. Anyways, but it was a special <laughs> event ticket and we were like, we're not going to go again because Jeff already went over the weekend too. So anyways, it was very nice. Shout out to the cloud club. Very nice. Hope we can all do it together. Maybe in September. Um, and thank you, Matt, for treating us very nicely. Cause I was like, what the fuck is this? Wow. What is this Mecca. Yeah. I've never heard of it. And Jeff, texted us that the cloud club is bomb and i thought that was like a new bar or something i didn't know well it is and jenny our bartender was rad and uh you know we got to know her oh we also got just like come to your seat with the tray of it's it's what yes <gasps> yeah oh there he oh. is thank you Char. <laughs> sorry sorry Shark. Shar coming in hot with the uh wait why does seat? it say jewish hold on let me it's read the jewish caption yeah, it's Jewish Jewish um, Heritage Night. Oh, tonight. I yeah. thought I just saw Gabe Kapler Jewish, and I was like, "Wait, what? <laughs> oh, yes. I know, but it's just kind of odd to. But it's Heritage Night. That's yeah. Why. Like, that's why, why do you need to know if the bobblehead is Jewish? Wow, wow. thank you, Shar, for the yeah. close up. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, it's it's on a tray to Doesn't, your seat, like like a whole one or mini it's whole. It's, Holy shit. And they'll serve you your drinks. If it's slow enough, she comes down and like, she's like, do you want another one? I was like, yeah. <laughs> always. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> always. Yes. <gasps> That's I awesome. know it was that is very, right look, my I am, I am like, wow, wow, That's, wow, wow. That sounds like how me and Char live in Reno when it's just me and Char. Yeah, like, That's well, the kind thanks. of treatment we get. <laughs> okay. That's the kind of treatment well, we get. <laughs> well, whatever. In our house. <laughs> It was very special. I it doesn't it's not lost on me, man. So I'm very grateful. And I, I hope I can share it with you guys because it was I mean, really, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and this was after the Oriental comment. So I was like, fuck that white man. Shut the fuck up. You're probably See? sitting in bullshit seats, asshole, with your grandchild using the word Oriental. Anyways, that's the balance of life. That's the yeah. balance of life. Yeah, I'm here with my pinky up drinking my rosé. <laughs> good for you that sounds amazing Dara you know where it is the cloud club I yeah. feel like I've seen it but I don't it's above it's above the retired numbers oh, okay in that corner uh -huh. on the sweet level yeah 
So let's go. <laughs> Done. Dude. Anyways, moving on. Ange. Yeah. So my. Um, I, I don't even know what you're going to say, and I'm scared. <laughs> you have no idea. No, no, you're not ready. No, it's been. <laughs> so it was. Oh, there has been a lot of struggle, but so much joy in the past few days. So uh, my mom came home, which is really, it is exciting because it's been three months in and out of the hospital and nursing home, three whole months and five, three months and five days. And um, we finally decided no more hospitals. Let's just bring her home, take care of her there, um, make sure she's comfortable. And that's the most important thing. And it was the best decision. She's much happier. You know, the work level is a little different on my end now, mm -hmm. but, but it's just so nice to have her here. And, um, obviously it's been a learning curve. It's been a week, basically last Wednesday, she came home, but because of, you know, now we're on hospice for people that aren't familiar, basically, technically it's end of life care, but people can be on hospice for years, yep. you know, um, and it's just better. Like, you know, there, there comes a point where you're going to the hospital not to get better, just to kind of stay afloat. And in the meantime, they're getting blood drawn, all these tests, and it's miserable. It's depressing as fuck. So this is a lot more peaceful of a situation. And my my family is big. We can all be together. So this weekend we were all together. It was just really nice. So because we're starting this new program with hospice, there's all these new people that are coming in. There's a nurse, a social worker, there's a bathing nurse. There's just all these people, deliveries, everything gets delivered and the insurance covers it, which is amazing. Wow. Like the That's hospital huge. bed, hospital table, oxygen, all the medical supplies, Good. diapers, Good. wipes, like everything, right? Good. So- <clears throat> we had everything set up with the nurses and I thought we were good. And then I get a call on Saturday saying that, or no, Friday, saying that a social worker needed to come. And I was like, what the fuck do I need to? I mean, I, I understand social workers are obviously important, but I already have all, all, everything in place. My understanding is social workers help if you need, you know, resources and stuff. But every so I was like, OK, of course, I'm not going to say no. Sure, she can come. She's set to come at 12 o'clock on Saturday. OK. And uh, my whole family, all my sisters, my nephew were all there. And I just want to like celebrate, relax. You know, I got all this champagne, wine for us to just kind of enjoy the day. But I have to wait for the social worker to come. She's an hour late. She's lost. She calls me. I'm just like, mm -hmm. what's going on? So anyway, finally, she shows up. And just as I just as I anticipated, it was pretty much something that could have been done over the phone. How is your mom's mental state? How is her this? All these questions I've already answered. So I was like, oh, my God, this is a waste of time. I have uh, an Aperol spritz waiting for me. You know, <laughs> you can leave now. The only thing different that she asked me that the that the nurse didn't bring up was um, she said, uh, are you in need of spiritual guidance? <laughs> mm. And I was like, for me or her? Like, what do mm -hmm. you mean? And she was like, either. And I was like, um, you know, she's we're both good. We're both good. Thank you. I, mm -hmm. my spiritual guidance is actually waiting for me, uh, as soon as you leave, <laughs> uh, and the ice is melting. So, um, so we wrap up, everything's done and she gets up to leave and we're in the living room talking and my sisters and my nephew are all, there's an indoor patio connected mm -hmm. to the living room and they're all there kind of playing <clears> guitar, <throat> or hanging out, talking. She gets up to leave and she bolts out like walking real fast. And I just kind of like following her out. And she walks into the fucking screen door and <gasps> breaks the screen door. And all of us are right there. I'm right behind her. And she just walks broken. And her, <laughs> and her body, her body. <laughs> like what she when she hit the screen door, she froze. And I saw her body like tense up because actually out, out of that screen door is kind of a, an incline. So if she were oh, to no. fall, it's <laughs> downward. So she just kind of like tensed up her body so she wouldn't <gasps> fall. And I'm like, oh, my God. And we're all just standing. My sisters, my nephew, we're all right there. So <gasps> I, in my head, I'm like, oh do not look at anyone. Do not look no. at anyone. No. I turned to the side. I took a few deep breaths. And I was like, are you okay? <laughs> It was like, I can't believe I didn't see that. And I was like, yeah, bitch, <laughs> me too. How and why were you running like right? Out of hell, I don't understand. And so uh, the funniest thing when someone breaks a screen door is immediately they go to try to fix it. <laughs> so she's standing there trying to put it back in. Meanwhile, all of us in the patio are just holding our breaths like right. half yet. Like right. when is when is 
she can't do it. My other sister comes to help oh. me. We can't do it. And then she goes, it's like a, it's like 90 degrees, right? In fucking Orange County. She goes, oh, I have a friend in the car. Maybe he can come fix it. And we were like, your friend is just sitting oh, in the car. And it's seat. hot as hell. But I didn't want to turn it down because the screen is broken. So it was like, okay, sure. Have your friend come. Her friend comes this guy and tries to fix it and he can't fix it either. And we're, we were just like, you know what? Just leave. It's okay. <laughs> Please just leave so we can laugh. You know, like really is all I was thinking. And um, so finally, <laughs> oh my God. So finally she leaves and the door is just kind of hanging on its hinge. The screen door is just kind of hanging on its hinges. And as soon as she leaves, we all just start <laughs> cracking up and we're all talking about like, because we all saw it from different angles. I was right behind her. My nephew was like perfectly side. He saw the perfect side uh, profile and we're all giving our own accounts of like what happened. <laughs> And then thankfully my brother-in-law came and he was able to fix it in like two seconds. So okay. anyways, thanks, big Lou. Thanks, Lou. Yeah. So so we're all sitting in the kitchen laughing just for a very long time. Finally, I'm able to have my Aperol spritz and we're just hanging out talking about it. And somehow we came, like, obviously I came up with this idea, but we were talking about just how funny <laughs> it would be to have a show you know, a live show of just people walking into screen doors just because it's so funny, like from the from the you know point of view, like outside. Uh, yes. Imagine what her face looked like. Yes. <laughs> and then I came up with the idea of like naked walking into screen oh, doors. Ouch. That would that and would, it would be like naked. It would be like <laughs> naked comedy, like step on a rake and like, oh, oh you know, like uh, like the, um, the Three uh, Stooges, but naked. I think, sure. There's probably no, a porn that's like that. There's or like an it. obstacle course, you know, like that. What's that um, <laughs> Japanese show? Oh, I love Wipeout. That one. Like a yes. wipeout, but naked because yes. then your boobs are all floppy. Yeah, and your and dick. Like, yeah. Your balls. And so, and so I thought we could call it instead of strip club, trip club. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, sure, get that together, and in your spare time, <laughs> it'll be hosted by Ricardo Falls. Oh my oh god! Oh my god! Shout out to Richard, Jesus. <laughs> so, so, Did so the same th thing happened to Richard? No, no, he tripped <laughs> in the parking lot on the every. Yeah, he tripped on the parking lot and knocked over a trash can. <laughs> You must have some magnet in your house. No, I'm telling you, it's it's a thing. I think that people will come to this trip club and it could be a whole new genre and we'll call it eroticom. Oh, I mean, boy, it writes itself. It really does. Okay. Will so it also go, go with your flash commodity? No, I mean, I haven't given up on that, but that's separate. <laughs> but eroticom. Yeah, I, I I think Did you there's... Google any of this? It might no, already be out. I don't want to. I already get fucked up emails and ads as it True. is. I'm well, scared. What are you looking at? Eroticom. But that's not the end of the story. Oh, so, that, what? So, that, so that was on Saturday. And then on Tuesday, <laughs> my mom's nurse comes. Yesterday? Twice. Yes. Oh. My mom's nurse comes twice a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. So he shows up yesterday and he's oh. great. He's great. He did a whole checkup on her. And, you know, he parks his car on the side here because there's not really a close parking spot so he just double parks he doesn't give a fuck which is fine with me and he had forgotten something in the car so I'm in the indoor patio and our, our caregiver my friend Michelle is in the living room with my mom and I'm getting paperwork together you know for her medications and he's like oh I forgot it in my car I'll go get it he walks into the screen door and <laughs> <laughs> what is it? and I was like Am I losing my mind? Is this why? Really yes. Happening? Why is this happening? Is this really? <laughs> and I, I immediately I couldn't hold it this time because he so with the with the social worker, she just kind of froze, you know, and, and like tensed her body. He flailed <laughs> like he was walking. So fast. He hit the screen door. And, you know, when you bump into something, he put his arms out, <laughs> his legs like, oh my God, what's happening? I couldn't hold it. I ran into the room. Oh and my God. I ran into the room and just started because I knew he hadn't fallen. So I knew he was okay, but I could not face him. And I, I was just like, I don't know if this makes you feel better, but the social worker walked into the screen too. I, I don't know what this is. I've been here taking care of my mom since December of 2020. Do you know yes. how many people, strangers have come in and out of this house? It has never happened. 
<laughs> and it's twice in like three days. And my sister <sighs> said, like, she thinks my dad is making this happen because we just need some levity and some laughter. Something. And yeah. now the screen door is fucked. I have to get a new one. <laughs> it's bent. Like I, I can barely open and close it. The metal is bent. And I'm going to have to call this company and say two of your employees have walked <laughs> into my screen door. I'm yes. going to money for it. Like, I'm not paying for that shit, right? <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> I It's a miracle. I really, I don't understand. But it's brought me so much joy. I'm not even mad. I'm not even mad. <laughs> you, you need a camera on that. Yeah. Thing. That's what my sister said. We should have had a fucking, yeah. Like a ring or a, something. But the ring would not have captured it. Because no. it has to be from the outside looking in. <laughs> so you could see the face and the, you know, the smashing. But just it's just unbelievable right i have to tell you there's a um i think it's the more recent curb your enthusiasm season which i fell off and i've been trying to watch it it's just it's hard to watch him now i don't know why but uh did you guys ever watch curb your enthusiasm mm -hmm. a little bit not religiously but yeah i watched it I the it first funny. i think it's the we're first in a episode. different place now though that was like i'm surprised that show's still on to be quite honest because i'm like eh, you know um he's trying <laughs> there david's trying uh but the first episode of the newest season i think it's a it's about people walking into door, glass doors there's something he's, special there and he's dating um lucy lou that's all i'll say oh wow <laughs> it okay. doesn't last i'll tell you that much and also john ham i think is in that episode which I was all about I'm all bring on. That's why I keep watching it. I'm like, is there more John Hamm? I'll mm. watch that. But it's really if you want to to, to have a little uh, more uh, flesh. What are you talk, talk, talking about? The trip club trip club. You should watch oh, eroticom eroticom. Sure. But should. eroticom, you get, have to be naked. Mm. Well, <laughs> anyway, sounds dangerous. I don't know. We'd yeah. have to have a good legal team behind. Yeah. In medical. People are going to have to sign off on that shit. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> yeah, I told you. I was like, you won't believe what has happened to me. <laughs> I, I really, I still laugh about it all day. As soon good. as I think about, and I have two different falls to picture in my head. It's just so much joy in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh. don't, don't do it yourself. Who does that? It's just... May, there's something going on at your but house. Somebody walking so fast oh and just God. assuming there's not a door that or a poor screen social door. Social worker, you didn't even <laughs> want her there. She was the worst one because. Oh. And my sisters, they had actually thought that we had gotten in a fight or something, or it didn't go well she because she was walking so, so fast. But now I know she was probably walking fast because there was someone sweating in her yes, car, waiting, dying, for her. basically. <laughs> And then she's like, can you fix this door? And then they, the best part about the the screen door is that they spend the next few minutes just trying to put it back in <laughs> as you're trying to hold in your laughter. That's kind of the best part. It's just like, <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, and yeah, it's a good life. <sighs> it is your time. It's totally I just like, what is Tony. happening? Yeah, it's my dad. One million percent. Yep. Uh, wow. Well, <laughs> there's not really any good segues for that. You got anything, sharp? <laughs> Nothing that interesting that'll top that. No more COVID in the family. No more COVID. Any no. monkey pox or polio? Oh, <laughs> Jesus. That's what you want to hear about. No, I don't know. It's just hilarious. All of it's fucking hilarious. Well, I can just say that those two moments, I have two moments of pleasure, Ooh. and those are both of them. So, <laughs> so if, if y'all want to go with your moments of pleasure, we can wrap it up. Yeah. Oof. Uh, I think last night, Jesus, Cloud Club, hello. It's like mm -hmm. going, it's like uh, when you're able to take first class or business class, you're like, I never want to, I just never want to go back. I wouldn't know. That is my dream one day. And I want it to be a long flight, like to the Philippines it's kind of the first best. class. Yeah. One day. I, I haven't done international first class, only to New York. And that was great. Yeah. Never I've always forget. wanted those. I've always wanted those pods. I see my friends that fly <laughs> that are somehow ballers enough to go travel, you know, on a 
14 hour flight and they have those little pod beds and i'm like dude i want to be that kind of girl i want to be that kind of ball yeah <laughs> maybe we'll say when bitch talk gets a big check our first big check the three of us should fly first class it doesn't have to be international but somewhere let's say new york when we go to our new york meet new york they hide in all our new york people new orleans i mean we want to go to nashville we have mm. options we'll fly first class well, together that to shit, celebrate. that shit may happen there's it's little, gonna happen there's a little Soon. yeah there's a lot of destinations locally or you know but i want like a, at least a five hour flight. we need some hours yeah or a Hawaii flight. Mm, that's a good one too. Mm-hmm. All right, Shar, your moment of pleasure. Uh, it's uh, well, you know, it's a little bit of a guilty pleasure of uh, what I've been <laughs> obsessed with right now is um, the current season of Big Brother. <laughs> oh man, here we the go. Is it the Big Brother? Yeah, well, because you know, Big Brother is on every every summer. Oh yeah, I know Big Brother. Yeah, and so I'm like just obs- I mean like it's it's what's taking I mean like that's the only interesting thing about me right now. <laughs> can I can I ask you? I'm up to, that, I'm up to date. Did that start because when you're on Alice cuz I remember they Sarah, yeah. Sarah I mean, like, was obsessed with Big Brother. Um reality television in general became okay. a thing for me. Actually, I take that back. Uh when I was, you know, obviously in high school and stuff like that, I, you know, real world road rules, right. obviously. Yeah. But when Ooh. in the in the early aughts and in two thousand, when all the reality shows started kicking in, um, when I started working in radio, I had to watch these shows to mm-hmm. be up. And so, like, I didn't give a. Sh- I didn't watch the first season of Survivor. I didn't watch the first season of Big Brother. I didn't watch the first season of American Idol. But when I started working, like about 2002, when I jumped into into radio, that was all we ever fucking talked about. Mm-hmm. So then I was just like, oh, I actually have to watch this stuff. And then I was, you know, super into it. Um, but oh, uh, no, I'm up to date, Shar, on Big Brother. I started watching it in the hospital. You have uh, limited channel options. And, and now I'm like, I'm caught up. I love Taylor. Yeah, no. And that's the thing is, um, you know, last year when i didn't know if you were watching it again Ange, because i didn't know you were like if the cookout was it mm. you know because i don't know if you remember aaron mm-hmm. last year was the cookout season where they were they the all the uh people of color bound together to get the first black oh yeah you guys talked about that yeah it was the whole thing yep uh, the first, that was their they, they, they did a secret alliance where they were so secret and they were so calculated in how they were going to get to make it that the the last six people uh, were the ones were all uh, people of color to make sure that there was going to be the very first black winner of Big Brother, and they were successful. This year is like the opposite of that. It's like the grossest thing ever. It's this obnoxious. <laughs> these like these two like a bunch of igno- igno- obnoxious people that basically bullied on the beautiful black girl mm-hmm. like there's this girl named taylor hale who was uh she's a beauty pageant queen you know miss congeniality voted miss congeniality when she if uh, for miss for being miss michigan and i think everybody just got super jealous of her because you know she got along with the guys and the, the, all the women. It's like super catty. Well, they- yeah, it was a woman. Yeah, because she wasn't, she wasn't trying to befriend all the women in the beginning, and all the women wanted to band together, and she wanted to befriend the men because they were stronger at challenges. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of her way of, and they they took that as like, all right, let's get her out, and then. But it was but really bullying, though. It was. It was like it was the gross kind of like. It was so unwarranted. Like she did not. And it was like, based over a lie too. Yeah, it was anyway. just based over. It was just based over these catty women going, "Oh, I hate her. She's bully. She's she like." And there was one point. There was a, a one point where, uh, one of the girls was being super emotional because she was gonna have to throw a competition. Um, because to get because her their goal, their big goal was to get Taylor out of the house. And mm-hmm. she was partnered with Taylor and she's like, I'm gonna have to 
uh, go against my belief system and actually throw a competition. And she was all being all emotional and like a sack of suds on a bed. And everybody <laughs> thought that she, everybody thought that she was, well, yeah, you have to watch Big Brother and know what I'm talking about. They all sulk and whatever. And she was They're playing like, the game. Right. Right. And, and yeah. And so Faking anyway, it. anyways, this girl's like super crying and being emotional. And then every and the and it just so happens that this girl, Nicole, has like her mom um is bad with cancer. So they thought that her mom that she got news about her mom when she went into the diary room. And so everybody's all concerned about her. And like Taylor is actually like, oh, I you like, I feel so bad. Can we pray for her mom and stuff like that? And then she goes up to ta- she goes up to Nicole and goes, Can I um like you don't have to fight, you know, like you if you if this your family or your your health is more important in this game, you know, just you know, like you can throw it in. I'm okay if you, you know. You throw in the towel for us. You don't have to fight for us to win or whatever. This chick took it so passive aggressively, ran to her best friend, and they freaking chewed her out like nobody's business. It was like the grossest display of, like, it was just gross and it was disgusting. And that's actually how the season has kind of unfolded is like now it's like this whole team of like misfits that are just like, we're not going to stand for this bullying of this. Of, of this person and they formed an alliance and so all those people that were like the assholes are all getting picked off one by one that Good. have been trying to get taylor out and it's like so and these people it's like pre-jury on big brother it's like when you know like if you're pre-jury you don't get sequestered so you go out into the real world and so like and these and people they're getting yes exactly hate, hated on and basically they're they're just like and they're they, acting like what what did i do i didn't ex- do anything that's exactly it's like that's like my obsession is watching these people like walk out of the house and like have egg on the face because that guy this guy daniel who's like the biggest asshole imaginable keeps telling everybody in their face because he thinks he's a big brother super fan and he keeps telling everybody you can't hide everybody's gonna see what this is like out in the real world and i'm like he went out to the real world everybody fucking hates the projection is crazy yeah and i'm glad you brought that up because it's like these people now now that big brother's been on for so long they basically grew up watching the show and their main goal in life is to be on this show Mm. and imagine it finally happens and you end up becoming hated because of how you portray yourself on the show, which is basically how you are because mm-hmm. you can't, and I mean, you're put in certain situations that you wouldn't be put in in real life, but the cameras are on you at all mm-hmm. times. And that's when they capture a lot of shit. That's like, and that's and, you. And that's, <laughs> you know, well, that's the thing is like when they're trying to say, Oh, I like, he was like trying to, in all these exit interviews, he's just like, Oh, I, I know that I'm, I'm getting the villain edit. And I'm like, no, dude, you get what they gave you. Your edit is what you give them. Like, I'm, you know, like, I, you know, because of radio and because of over the years, I've befriended a lot of these contestants on Big Brother. And that's a, a lot of them are like, you know, some of them have been painted the villain and all that. And they come to me and they're like, you know what? It's what I gave them. It's it's like mm-hmm. I was whatever I put out there. There's some truth to this. You can't mm-hmm. say, no, that's mm-hmm. not me. Mm-hmm. And so and that's what these guys and but that's these people that are have put that out into the universe and then they're trying to backtrack on like oh no that's not me i didn't mean it i'm just like i'm like like just totally it's i don't know these that type of show and like big brother especially when you know life is kind it's not slow but it's definitely not super exciting right now but i'm like dude watching this kind of like this kind of humanity and like the karma of you know the karma circling back around and these people getting what they deserve and somebody like taylor who's actually thriving in the game now like she's she'd been trying they've been trying to get her out for the first three four weeks and like she had nobody like imagine being in big brother you're you know if you have usually you have a person and for because she was so ostracized and so bullied in the house she had nobody and she was like like i thought she was gonna mentally break and now she's like thriving on the show with the team with you know with an alliance with people that have her back and she's she's kicked out all the assholes 
it's it's so anyways that's what's <clears> been <throat> kind of me like i'm watching it on the twitter feeds and on the live feeds and oh wow kind of you are on it that's why you didn't return our text the other yeah. day yeah Thanks, Char. <laughs> now we know what you're doing. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm on. I'm on Twitter. I'm watching the Big Brother live feeds and all <laughs> oh the podcasts. Uh, are, there, are there a lot of Big Brother podcasts? There have to be. Oh, uh, or just reality show podcasts. You know what's funny is because I've been watching a lot of. I've been recapping a lot of the challenge, and then there's the new challenge out. And then it, I only pay attention to Big Brother podcast during Big Brother season because I want to hear like everybody's outside commentary. <laughs> I'm realizing, dude, there is so much, and it it a lot of it is past contestants trying to I hang was, on. Yeah, yeah, I was assuming that has to yeah. be that. Yeah, it was like past winners, past, and some of them are some of them are great. And some of them are awful. Like some of them, like, I'm sure. And they get these interviews because they used to be on the show. Right. I've like listening to these exit interviews with these people that are getting evicted, being interviewed by people from another season that came in like you know, tenth place. And I'm just like, dude, what are you? And guys? no one remembers. And they're like, who are you? And why are you talking? And you don't even make any sense. But you're <laughs> able to talk to these. Still, people. yeah. Uh well. So hey, is Big Brother on every night too? It's on like three nights a week. Three nights a week. Okay. I I had a well, one of my good friends who is my first roommate, Megan. She loved Big Brother, and so I remember when we, when always... she was here, it was on <laughs> well, that a was, lot. I mean, it's the smartest thing. It's it's it is the, the, like programming is. wise. Yeah, programming wise, like on a, a summertime when there's no yep. new television. Correct. You've got. Every year you got Big Brother. Yep. And it comes on. You, you got Sunday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And then throughout that, you got the live feeds. And Big Brother used to air these live. <laughs> well, this is the thing is they Can you watch to... it just on I'm sure online? Yeah, like, you could just go in right now. Well, yeah, exactly. Oh, 24-7. I mean, like I, and that's the thing is like <laughs> I don't I don't watch it. I watch the I watch like the highlight or not the highlights. I, I go on Twitter and people share all the, the highlights, but there are people that are 24 seven just watching what the hell is going on. you got four cameras. And so it started out the live feeds. You can you used to be able to pay for them separately online. And then later on um, in years past, they started putting them like two or three hours of live feeds. They called it big brother after dark. And they would, the I remember first, that. It was like on the pop channel and on E mm -hmm. or something like that. On what on they had some partnership with some network, and then now they put all the live feeds on Paramount Plus. So if uh, you have, so oh, there like, you go, Ange. Well, that's the thing is Paramount <laughs> Plus. Paramount Plus is like they're killing it because these people are paying. There's probably Big Brother people out there that are paying for that. Oh, like yeah, the way that Ange pays six dollars a month for the challenge worth every penny <laughs> <laughs> oh man you guys all right <laughs> well that that's been your moments of pleasure everybody it's <laughs> it's such a brother it's such a variety running into a screen a baseball <laughs> game and reality yes. television <laughs> yes that's american life in a nutshell <laughs> basically <laughs> all different walks of life I mean, I would also say the other moments of pleasure, just the unraveling of Dr. Oz, which is hilarious. I know, Angie, you see the crudite. Yeah. <laughs> I don't the know. If you... Yeah. And uh, and the whole dump FBI fiasco. It's just I, I you can't write this shit. You cannot write it. Exciting times we're living in. Is it? um sure uh yeah that's our basic for this week who the hell knows what's gonna happen in the next week <laughs> to be I hope something happens I, know. Know. I hope it's good i just oh want yeah good no things I, to happen well that's what i'm saying i hope something interesting happens to me in the next week because <laughs> yeah i mean like literally big brother <laughs> in the challenge is the most important most hey if that's bringing your pleasure I, there's no judgment 
Zero judgment. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep inviting people over and hope they walk into the screen. Yeah, you should invite Richard <laughs> over. Dude, we gotta set up a camera first. If you're gonna do that, you gotta set up a camera. You have a tripod, right? You can just set no, it up. No, but I no, oh. not a tri- I it has to be one of those like discreet has to ones be that you just in the kind corner of, yeah. somewhere. Maybe I can find one at Target. Yeah. I gotta hey, go you- there today. I was going to say really quickly, you should give a shout out to your nephew because I know he's uh, Ryan who has his music out there now. He has like an Instagram. Oh, nice. Yes. Give him, give him a shout out. Yeah. Thanks, Aaron. My nephew, who is in his mid 20s, he just turned 25. He's been a musician since forever. Like he could just pick up a guitar and learn it when he was, I don't know, maybe 12 or something. Ukulele. I mean, hand him an instrument, violin, cello piano he can just kind of figure things out so he's always written music and had songs uh but he was really wanting to produce this one song that he'd written recently it's called body or nothing and he's been working Mm. with a producer he does all of the vocals all of the guitar all of the bass his producer just added the percussion but everything else is all ryan and uh, his music is out there if you want to check him out on instagram he's not rye r-y-e and his song is called body or nothing so if you want to hear my nephew singing about love and sex, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's a good song. It's a good it's song. Hot. And he's, he's, I love his guitar playing and yeah, I'm really proud of him. It's just the first of many. So uh, you got to start somewhere and, and he did it. He worked his ass off and I'm super proud. Good. Of him. Good. Follow not Rye, R-Y-E. Okay. Last moment of pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I didn't bring it up. I forgot. Is anyone catching Madonna out there? No. It's so random that you brought that up. I I wa- randomly walked into my mom watching videos of her on YouTube. Like what she's doing. She has a new and you know, Jeff's arguing with me that it's not true, but I'm like, I swear that's what she said. She has a new album out. I kind of want to get it and it's called 50 Number Ones. He doesn't think she's had 50 Number Ones. But I'm like, that's what the album's called. I would believe it, but hasn't Mariah Carey had the most? How many has Mariah Carey had? Oh I my. think, or it's either the Beatles or Mariah Carey have the most number one songs, I think. Not Michael Jackson. He's up there as well, but I thought it was Mariah Don't Carey know. and the Beatles that are up top. It's a, those four are for sure. I'm looking. Uh, album. So it's basically like Immaculate Collection, but a few Fif- more. Because 50 number good. ones. That's yeah. what it's called. Madonna makes, this is in night. this is in 2020. Uh, Forbes reports Madonna makes history with 50 number one hits. So my, my husband, Jeff, I know he's going to listen to this. You're wrong. Anyways. <laughs> she's she's been uh promoting she was on jimmy fallon if anyone wants to look it up go ahead it's cringe a little but um because it's madonna uh and you know she's got a lot of work going on on her face she's looking like that lion lady a little bit um and she likes to wear grills a lot but she's also really she's pretty funny uh on jimmy fallon and i like that she kind of um basically makes fun of jimmy fallon the whole time oh while good. they're on yeah because he's just whatever i just i still don't understand how he still has a night uh nighttime i just show. think he's real basic and that's why he was like right for america is too big that's why there's a lot of people that like that basic ass shit right um yeah she called what did she say she's like you're like the dad that no one wants to do fun stuff around <laughs> she said that during the interview <laughs> So, uh, but, uh, yeah, I I thought Madonna would lean into aging a little bit and she's clearly not. That's all I'm going to say. So if you, if you want to look at Madonna's face, you can also just go on to Instagram. She doesn't have, yeah, I saw that one. I saw that Jimmy Kimmel interview or not Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon interview. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's stretched. She's stretched. So she doesn't have a single wrinkle on her yeah no there's zero wrinkles five-year-old face yeah yeah anyways mm-hmm. that was another moment of pleasure <laughs> anyways we should wrap because that's a million moments of pleasure so uh yeah 
Why not? We can have oh, multiple normally, pleasures. <laughs> yeah. And normally we're fucking, you know, sad Eeyore, sex. Like sad. Yeah. Sack of sad. Or what did you call it? Yeah. Sucking thuds on a bed or something. Yeah. What was that, Char? Is that a big brother phrase? I don't know that term. Oh, uh, she's what did I say? A sulking sack? I don't know. No, no sucking, soaking so- suds in a bed. On a bed. Like I don't know. I just came up with it. I have no. Idea. <laughs> it just came out of my mouth. That's all I can think soaking of. Soaking suds. It was yeah. It was like soaking, soaking suds, suds on a bed. A, yeah, on a bed. Uh, like, oh. Anyway, it was very well, yeah figurative or not figurative. What is it? Imaginative. Uh, cheers to more <laughs> cheers to more to come cheers i think i think i was trying to, to come, come up i think no. i was trying <laughs> no, no, no let's not go there <laughs> here's for more to come no no nope, none of it that's the oh. phrase. <laughs> what is what, what, what do you call it sad sack isn't that the term yeah, yeah but you sad said sack. soaking suds you said on soaking a bed suds on a bed i thought i, I meant i well you know what i meant was sulking suds <laughs> But what is I've a, never a, heard a, that either? A, a, a sulking sack, you know, like a sad but sack. But sulking suds is not. Yeah. <laughs> it's different. Forget, whatever. That's like I said. It's just what came out of my mouth. It didn't make any sense. Are you getting any <laughs> sleep? Are you still doing this like cleaning until? Oh yeah, that's why I'm talking like this because I haven't slept <laughs> since yesterday. Oh okay. Oh, God, I mean, Char, it's seriously. lunchtime. Take it's a lunchtime. nap for God's sakes. Get some sleep. <laughs> Sack, that coffee, sack, that coffee that soaking help. sack of yeah. sun. <laughs> Soak your sack. <laughs> no, nobody wants to soak your sack. <laughs> All right, that's it. We trip gotta club, go. everybody. Gotta go. Trip club. Yeah, trip. I'm sure that's trip a thing club already. coming in 2023. Eroticom. No, I don't want anything to do with that. Eroticom. That's... Erotic comedy. It's again. Even if you say it a million times, I just it's not going to be a thing. Is Camerotica better? No. Or it's already a thing. All right. Bye. (laughs) Thanks for listening. Ah, fine. If you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For more information about us, you can head to bitchtalkpodcast.com. This podcast is created, hosted, and executive produced by Aaron Lim. My co-host is Angela Tabora, a.k.a. Captain Party. The show is edited by producer Shar. We're powered by GoTo Productions. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcast.bff.fm. BFF.FM, best frequencies forever.